Hi, everyone. Uh, Reverend Ed here, and uh, this message is going out on uh, December 11th. It's the third Sunday of Advent. I can't believe uh, that we are moving through Advent uh, so quickly. You can uh, Today, I am at the Goodwins Mills uh, Church, and you can see the beautiful tree. This tree was um, set up and decorated uh, by uh, Michelle, and we really um, are thankful uh, for her ministry uh, with us. And you can see the, the beautiful stained glass uh, as well in the in the background. And I'm sitting on my uh, uh, on this very fancy church chair. Um, but uh, welcome to this message. Uh, we find ourselves today in uh, Matthew 11 verses two through 11, and I'm going to read. Um, for you, when uh, John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. And then Jesus quotes Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way uh, before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of woman, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater uh, than he. On this Advent season, as we uh, go into Matthew in, in uh, year A here in our lectionary, we once again hear of a messenger through the visions of a prophet, Malachi. And uh, in this scripture, uh, we see that uh, Jesus uh, is asked a question of John. John is in prison, and no doubt he had um, fear. No doubt he was questioning, is Jesus, is my cousin the promised Messiah as of old? Is this the person that Isaiah was speaking of and, and other prophets through the Old Testament. And when Jesus is asked the questions by John's disciples, he doesn't just say yes, he, he shows them, right? He, he, he references, uh, and I'm sure he showed them on that day, that the, the blind receive their sight. Those who are lame walk. The deaf hear. And even the, the, the poor ones are given the good news of redemption. And um, Jesus then brings this news through John's disciples back to John, who no doubt uh, had good faith uh, and was strengthened by that message, uh, strengthened by those acts of ministry, uh, strengthened by those acts of healing. And we can't take that for granted. And Jesus further uh, promotes this uh, feeling and, and to, to strengthen John by quoting uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, where a messenger is promised. In fact, the Christmas story uh, has so many prophecies of messengers that will come. And last week we touched on the importance of the prophet the prophetic voice, and the messenger. What is it about the human condition that needs to be told in advance that something great is coming? 
I think we need to prepare our hearts and our minds so that we can receive. If it just happens, if the great thing just happens, we could be overwhelmed. We could be in such awe. We may not understand the full depth of the experience. But in our biblical narratives, the prophets serve to warn us, serve to point us uh, back to God, and give us a, a, a look into the future to prepare the way, to prepare our hearts, to begin the preparation of our understanding. And I think that's the purpose of the message and the purpose of the messenger. Uh, Jesus is reminding th those folks that uh, John the Baptist has been given this strength, that John is a great man. However, um, he's the least in the kingdom. In other words, he's, he's a leader, right? And um, his job is to give the message, right? That this Messiah, this anointed one of God, is coming. Was John strengthened by this message? Did he still have doubt, even though Jesus uh, demonstrated in these acts of healing? Uh, did, did John still doubt? I don't know. Um, but I believe his strength was, uh, his faith was strengthened. I believe that um, perhaps John, in his imprisonment, really started to think about all the prophetic messages that messages that he had heard um, as he grew up and as he lived his life. And uh, it's that conviction of, yes, Jesus uh, is the person identified, right? God incarnate, our Emmanuel, God taking on flesh, dwelling among us, God with us, right? Today, I would have you reflect... Um, once again, on the prophet and on the messenger, on what we need to do in our own lives to prepare ourselves both in heart, mind, and spirit so that we can understand uh, the, the nativity narrative as it unfolds, that we can fully comprehend that God has inbroken into the earthly realm through Christ that the divine was made incarnate, and that God has come to earth in the person of Christ. Uh, and this is what we celebrate uh, in our lessons and carols on Christmas Eve. This is what we celebrate on Christmas Day uh, as we once again journey to that scene of the nativity with Mary and Joseph, with the shepherds, with the kings, with the gifts, with the animals, uh, in a humble place, in a stable. Uh, once again, we journey to this scene and we are asked to understand the spectacle before us, the, the magnificence of what has happened, to begin to start to understand the good news that God has done through Christ. Our Christmas tree in the background uh, has lights and it has um, natural uh, ornaments. Uh, th these ornaments represent uh, apples and pears and, and various things, but it's kind of a tree of creation, right? It, it's a tree of light. It's a tree of hope. Uh, it's a, a, a tree that within our worship brings us much joy as we celebrate light in this Advent season, as we light those candles on the Advent wreath every week, as we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, may we learn from the prophets. May we recognize the strength John had as he preached the coming of the Messiah, as he baptized people uh, in repentance and washed them of their sins, as he pointed the way to the anointed one so that we could understand, so that we could begin to unpack 
the unbelievable reality that was unfolding before us. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope you're um, taking advantage of all the different events that are in our area, uh, like prelude celebrations, uh, perhaps you're going to special concerts where you're hearing um, uh, music and you're hearing uh, different, different uh, things. Maybe you're doing some um, shopping for loved ones. And I, I just really hope that you're enjoying this Advent season and um, living uh, in, in joyous uh, uh, expectancy of, the, of Christmas Day. Um, celebrate. Celebrate the good news with your family. Celebrate the good news with your friends. Um, I thank you for being here to hear this message. I thank you for attending our worship. Um, I thank you uh, over the past few years uh, for your support and for your continued um, uh, patience and faith as we moved through a pandemic. Um, this Advent and Christmas season, may you experience God's abiding presence in each moment of your life. May you find strength in that. May you find hope. May, uh, may you find uh, uh, the way to prepare for the Lord to come into your hearts and minds and understanding. Um, I thank you for listening to me today. We'll talk soon. God bless.